we all understand the, our fallibility. We all understand that we make mistakes, and we have to be able to find a leader who not only admits they're making their mistakes, but, but because of their admission of that, they become better leaders. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. I'm your host, Kent Engel, president of Southeastern University. And today I'm going to be your co-host. My name is Patrick Fitzgerald. I'm Dr. Engel's deputy chief of staff, filling in for Dr. Michael Steiner. Yeah, great to have you, Patrick. And uh, and wow, we're excited to introduce our guest for today's show. No stranger to, to all of us has been on this show a few times, Dennis Ross. Dennis is a political science professor here at Southeastern University and retired U.S. congressman. Also serves as the director of the American Center for Public Leadership. Dennis, great to have you uh, on you. the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. And I want to start out uh, our conversation by talking about the release of your brand new book, yes. Reaching Across the Aisle, Reflections yeah. on My Experiences in Politics. Uh, in this memoir, you uh, share your experiences in public service as well as a lot of your passion for restoring civics and history and in our in our schools. So tell us about the heart behind this book and Absolutely. what you're hoping readers are going to take away from it. Absolutely. For me, it was a little bit cathartic because I had been keeping a journal since 1977. And I realized that I've had an interest in politics all my life since I was a little kid, but I never really understood why. I just kept pursuing it. And it wasn't until I was exposed to it and elected into it that I understand the significance of the public trust that you have in elected office. And I started looking around and seeing the erosion of not only those that are in public office and holding or not holding the public trust, but also the apathy of the American people not wanting mm -hmm. to be involved. And, and it was it was bothering me. And I found that, you know, leaving Congress was uh, uh, the right step for me because I have the chance to do what I'm doing now at the ACPL, especially with these young students. And I wanted this book to be instructive, not only to my students, but to others to understand how significant this form of self-government is, that if we don't participate and if we don't allow a diversity of thought right, right. to be vetted and seek not only resolution, which ultimately is where we want to get, but to build the relationships with those of opposite thought. Right. Because we may not be together on one issue today, but there are so many more issues out there that we are, and we have to learn how to do that. And so that's what I did in this book. I went very basic in trying to not only show my experiences, uh, struggling as I did not only with my politics, with my faith, with family, but also being at a level that I understood that it came down to the individual, that if we want to be the leaders we want to see, we have to exercise certain elements, and we all have those elements, yeah. you know, whether it be humility, whether it be having a sense of humor, whether it be admitting when you're wrong, mm. those things we need to be able to not only practice, but actually exercise yeah. in our daily lives. Yeah, that's so great. Good. Now, Dennis, from law to public service and now Christian higher education, you've had a very impressive career. What do you think are some principles or values that you've kind of carried throughout all those different sp spheres of influence that have kind of helped you guide your journey through your career? And that's a good question, Patrick, because I, I, I try to, uh, to, to encapsulate that in as few words as I can. And the, I would have to say, knowing who you are and being confident in who you are mm -hmm. is one of the most important things. And for that, I look not only to my faith, which I, I talk about struggling with over time, but I also talk about how struggling with my faith only strengthens my faith, but also the importance and significance of my family influence, right. uh, not only my wife, but my children, my parents, my brothers, my sisters, you know, just that really helped build me so that when I could go into any situation, I was confident with who I was, mm -hmm. irrespective of what the result may be. I knew that I was doing what I believed I should be doing, and I had the support not only of those around me, but also of myself yeah. in, in knowing I was doing yeah. it. That's, it's like that's a powerful. conviction to know that you're doing it. Is, right. It is. Yeah. And, and, and that's the David and Goliath issues, you know, that, that, that we as individuals shy away from. You know, I, I try to express this upon my students. You step out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be confident with who you are. And that, to me, uh, is a learned experience. I still struggle with it today, but I, I, I know that it has great value. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. Now, in your book, you, you talk a lot about statesman leadership, and you identify a statesman leader as an individual who unites people of diverse thought instead of dividing them. What characteristics do, do statesman leaders have, and how can we become more like a statesman leader? 
Well, the first thing is that you have to be more concerned with the greater good than their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. That is so fundamental because yeah. uh, leaders have to be in a position to where they know that the end result is going to benefit all mm -hmm. as opposed to just benefit themselves or their political party or their, their particular faction or group. And to me, having the ability to transcend uh, opposite uh, political thought is is a is a gift that each of us are given. If we don't exercise it, then shame on us. Mm -hmm. And and I had great relations, and I talk about this in my book with those that I never got along with politically. I mean, by not get along, as I I cancel out their vote, but how mm -hmm. we found common interests in other things. Mm -hmm. And those relationships are so crucial because you know when we get attacked again as a nation, we will. And, and you know we need to be together. We need to put aside our differences and know that we've we have the relationships that are going to get us through some of the most terrible times that this nation has ever seen. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's important that the American people today learn that and understand that. That's part of our history. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's so hard for people today to sort of build relationships with people of opposing views? And I talk about this in the book. You know, neuroscientists say that 95% that of our reactions are governed by our subconscious. Mm. And, and, and that happens at an early age in life. So when you're offended by somebody, the first thing you want to do is either lash right, back right. Or, or run. Or, and, right. and if you take a deep breath and you understand, you, you start to use some form of empathetic listening and find out why do you feel the way you do? Mm. And then, and then you, you have that conversation, why they feel, you don't have to agree with them. Yeah. And, and, but that takes discipline, Patrick. And and today we live in such an instant gratification world mm -hmm. that's governed by social media that we fail to understand that mankind has evolved to where it is because of interpersonal relationships, being able to have that, that, that conversation face to face and look each other in the eye. That is so important. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what statesmen understand and know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I would equate to, I mean, when I think of a statesman, um, I think of, uh, you know, people who have what I call respect language. <laughs> yeah, we're going to all have different uh, opinions, different approaches, um, just like there are different faiths out there in many ways. Yes. But, but you don't go and tear people down. No, and, right. and I mean, a statesman says, okay, what are the things we can celebrate together mm -hmm. and move forward in a way? I mean... You see a lot of that, what I call hate rhetoric, so to speak, right now in our in our leadership culture. You do, and unfortunately, that what's that's what seems to be selling because that's how they can get a you know their base behind them. But wouldn't it be? And I talk about this in my book. Wouldn't it be great if you could just hear a politician say, "I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. forgive me what I did was wrong." And I talk about it, there's a, an instance or two in there where I give examples of where people have done that, and it's made all the difference in their lives, and it's made a difference in the lives of the people that support them because we. We all understand the, our fallibility. Yeah. We all understand that we make mistakes, and we have to be able to find a leader who not only admits they're making their mistakes, but but because of their admission of that, they become better leaders. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. How, how do you think leaders across the nation can practice more self-awareness, <laughs> and, and and why is that so important? Well, we need to, uh, and again, we. It gets a little granular. We have to start at our communities. Yeah, that's true. And and the problem that we're going to right now is that we are starting to denigrate the leaders that we have, and therefore, as a result, we're not going to have the leaders we need mm -hmm. because nobody wants to get involved. Right. And it has to come back to the community. So, and I talk about this in my book. When I was young, I was recognized for speech contest here, for a thing here, and my community, which was Lakeland, supported me throughout my, my growth, yeah. and I found that to be rewarding, and it helped me become who I wanted to be, we need to replicate that in communities across this nation. Yeah. You know, we, we do it in athletics, we do it in right, arts, we right. do it in certain cultural events, but we need to do it in leadership. We yeah. need to organize community efforts to recognize, nurture, and and and, and elevate potential student, student leaders to become adult leaders, to become national leaders. Yeah, yeah. so good. That's so really good. good. And Dr. Engel, I actually remember one of the first things you ever said to me when I started working to you is I asked you, what is something that you think a lot of leaders today are lacking? And that was exactly what you said. You said a lack of self-awareness. Leaders yeah. don't. That's they true. Just don't understand self-awareness. And I think you're right. I think it comes from the communities that we're yeah. bringing kids up in. Yeah, 
so important. Um, we want to transition a little bit to talk about your role here at SEU yes. and the American Center for Public Leadership. So would you tell us a little bit about that, the mission absolutely. behind it, what you guys are trying to accomplish? Absolutely. And I, I, have, to, I have to begin because it, I wouldn't be here without Dr. Engel. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here without his vision of the ICPL. And, and, I, and I talk about this in my book because I knew that there was something missing when I was in Congress when I wasn't finding that fulfillment. And when I decided to leave Congress voluntarily to try something else, Dr. Engel approached me and gave me this opportunity to help effectuate his vision of creating these statesman leaders, these better people that we need to have to encourage them. And we've been able to do that. We understand that we have to do it through curriculum. So we've collaborated with other universities to develop right. research-based curriculum that, mm -hmm. that, that teach empathize, empath empathetic listening, that teach American history, mm -hmm. that teach the ability to have discussions, very controversial, uh, and yet do it in a civil fashion. We've been able to collaborate with other universities to build what we call the Civic Navigator, which is going uh, one of its own one of its one of a kind Myers Briggs type uh, mm. survey to determine your propensity for wanting to be involved in in, in civic activities yeah. and civility yeah. that'll be used not only by universities but in the public as well. We take students, we give them a professional development course so that they are ready not only academically when they graduate from here, but they are ready to go out and meet the market with professional, no dress for success, how to communicate. Uh, these are things that we find that are very, very important. We want to nurture good communities by being mentors to high school mm. students uh, in through essay contests. So we're, we're, we're trying to do a broad approach and we're hoping that we can continue to collaborate with other universities, to collaborate with community organizations, to help r raise the level of leadership so that these students, when they leave here, say, I know who I am and I know yeah, what I want to be because yeah, they great. need me out yeah. there. And you are, uh, and, I, and I hope I tell you this uh, often, but you're the perfect leadership gift for the ACPL. Thank you. The, you know, the way you served, the way you reached across the aisle in so many ways, the way you have a heart and passion to develop amazing leaders who will rise up and serve in pretty significant. Um, there's nobody greater than you. And we're well, so I appreciate grateful that. To have you a part of that. You know, one of the big keys is um, social media today and how it's being utilized. We see a lot of the younger generations, you know, grabbing that but but their heart is to to want to serve in some way yes how can we develop those kinds of leaders and use the the new platforms that allow us to um, begin to capitalize on these gifted individuals and and continue the right good engaged uh uh, uh, love for our communities and get involved in our communities in ways that that can promote? It's a very good question. I would first say we have to encourage them. We mm -hmm. have to encourage them by letting them know that they make a difference. Yep. Mm -hmm. And not only do they make a difference when, when they're in, in their academics, but when they're on their social media, they make a difference. Right. And that they can choose one of two ways. They can make a difference in a positive fashion. They can make a difference in a negative fashion. And I think if we give them the right resources to show what the, the, because of their divine design that they're able to be that that positive influence, yep. then they will use that social media. They will use those keys they have. They will use their gifts they have to be that that, that, that influence that we want to see. One of the things I tell my students is the fact that they are even taking these courses in the political science arena or in the American history arena puts them head and shoulders above mm -hmm. their peers already. Mm -hmm. And then we expose them in experiential opportunities, which I know you have promoted extensively throughout the university. And they get a chance to intern, you know, in, in, a, in a public sector or in a private sector. They realize that there are opportunities out there where they know, even if they feel average, they can make a huge yeah, difference. Yeah. So and then you, uh, what I love is you, you take them to DC and kind of of immerse yes. them in that whole experience transformative there. yeah transformative so, and yeah. and it it uh, it to me that's the fulfillment that i've been yeah. seeking and throughout my desire to want to be involved in the political that's process so good, so good. Yeah, that's great before we move into our fire round i just have one simple question for you what is the most common piece of advice that you give to your students who serve in the acpl um, it, be, be confident with who you are. Yeah. yeah that's be great. confident with who you are. And I watch these students because we do debates in class. There'll be impromptu debates on particular issues and they'll have to take the opposite side that they don't agree with. But yet they have to mm. exude some form of confidence mm. in order to be able to communicate that. They understand that they're not taking the side that they believe in, but they also understand that they've got to be able to show that they have the, the, the capabilities of communicating in a certain fashion. So and, and being confident with who they are is something we try to teach them in so many ways. And that's building a great individual at so many different levels. 
It's great. Yeah. We're going to move into our fire round. You're no stranger to our fire round. We ask a couple of quick questions uh, kind of surrounding everything we've just been talking about so we can get some of the practical and applicable pieces of advice from your experience for all of our listeners. So uh, I think we'll do three quick questions. Patrick, yeah. you can be in with the first one. Sure. Sounds good. Um, so, Dennis, how do you think leaders, specifically in public office, can stand firm in their faith while they serve in that public sector? Because being a public official is what they do. It's not who they are. Mm. And as long as they're anchored to their faith and to their family, they will be able to endure all types of resistance and obstacles throughout their their, their political career. I experienced that. I lived it. Mm. I understood that. But I always had to remind myself that being a congressman is what I did. It yeah. wasn't who I was. That's yeah. great. Oh, well That's said. great. What encouragement would you give to leaders when combating disagreement and criticism? One, don't give up. Yeah. Uh, to understand the basis of why your opposition feels the way they do. Yeah. And that will allow you to be more um, empathetic in your yeah. listening. And one of the things that I learned, I'm also a certified Supreme Court certified mediator, and having gone through lots of mediations, is just when people have the chance to be heard. Right. When they have a chance to, be, to express themselves, they open up more, and they're more inclined mm -hmm. to develop that relationship, which ultimately hopefully leads to some resolution if not at least at least it leads to the relationship development that's so necessary yeah, yeah. well well said that's so good and last question what is one piece of advice that you would like to give to your 20 year old self if you could <laughs> <laughs> it's a loaded one yeah um pr probably endure more Endure. Endure more. Endure. I, I, I learned the hard way of, of giving up too easily on so many instances in my life. And, and, and I, I realized that if I had endured just a little bit more, I probably could have done a, a, a lot more. Wow. Powerful. Yeah, yeah, it's Powerful. Good. Well, Dennis, we want to thank you for joining us again on the Framework Leadership Podcast. Grateful for thank you. your contribution to this university, but more importantly, your contribution to this nation yeah. and how Very you're kind. raising up leaders that are going to serve and make a difference already. Uh, some of our graduates are serving mm -hmm. in public office yes, we do. in a lot of positions across Very proud of them. the country. Yeah. And, and so we're just grateful for what you're doing. If you want to stay up to date with Dennis, you can follow him on Facebook and LinkedIn at Dennis Ross. You can also grab this brand new book, Reaching Across the Aisle from Amazon. Uh, check out what's new for the American Center for Public Leadership. And you can do that at the ACPL.org, the ACPL.org. Again, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank Both you. Of you. And thank everybody for joining us on this week's Framework Leadership Podcast. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Ingle at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Ingle. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership Newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop on to there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.